Welcome to our weekly Bible study on 1 Samuel. We are now in chapter 6. I would encourage you to pause this video and read chapter 6 if you haven't already. Just want to share a few thoughts for our Bible study today. We have been following a story within 1 Samuel that began in chapter 4. This is the loss of the Ark of the Covenant. And one way to think about the Ark of the Covenant is that it is God's mobile throne. It's where his presence resides inside of the ark. It holds the tablets of the Ten Commandments, Aaron's budded staff, and manna. Now, the Israelites tried to use the Ark of the Covenant kind of like a talisman. They almost wanted to manipulate God and win a battle using the Ark as a talisman. So the Philistines actually win that battle and they take the Ark because God allows them to win the battle, but then they treat the ark almost like a trophy. They put it within their temple to their gods, and God visits his wrath upon the Philistines for acting like they defeated Yahweh and own him. Yahweh instead defeats their god, Dagon, the Philistine god, and, and sends plagues upon the Philistines. So the Philistines, sick of the plagues, repent of their sin and return the Ark of the Covenant with a guilt offering. Now, in this story, in chapter 6, there are so many echoes from the story of the Exodus. We see that God's people are defeated in some way, but that is followed by God's judgment against Israel's enemies. The priests in Phil Philistia specifically say, why should we harden our hearts like Pharaoh? This is a callback to the Exodus. In the story of the Exodus, Pharaoh calls in magicians to mimic Moses' signs and miracles that he performs. And now the Philistines call in their priests to mimic Israelite priests. They act as mediators for God, hoping to appease his wrath with a sacrifice. In the same way that the Israelites go away from Egypt carrying Egyptian gold, Yahweh with the Ark of the Covenant is going to leave the Philistines with gold from them. So this is a new exodus, but Israel isn't involved at all. It's just God's Ark leaving the Philistines. Now, the priests offer five gold tumors and five gold mice, and this might seem really strange and you might wonder why. Five is often symbolic of Gentile nations and Gentile pagan gods. According to Leviticus chapter 5, the guilt offering was the proper offering for sacrilege, meaning trespassing on holy things or holy space. So this means that the Philistines are sending back to Israel a trespass offering. They are indicating and recognizing that they have committed sacrilege. They misused God's throne, the Ark of the Covenant. Now, we get a hint that they're also performing some kind of restitution because the, the word for tumors, these gold tumors that they make, uh, that same word is used for fortified cities. So it's almost like they're offering up symbols of their cities to Yahweh. They're representing the cities and villages that, are, that the Philistines occupy. And this is their way of giving glory back to the God of Israel. They misused his ark. They mistreated him. And so they're giving glory to him, offering a sacrifice to him, trying to appease his justified wrath. Now, they also show that they aren't really sure what's going to happen. They say, perhaps Yahweh will show mercy. This sounds a lot like the Ninevite king in the story of Jonah, who tries to repent for the sins of Nineveh. There's multiple stories throughout the Old Testament of Gentile kings not really knowing what they're do doing with God, but hoping for the best. They're hoping that God shows mercy and he does. But in this scenario in chapter 6, God, they give God two options. They give him a test. They put the Ark of the Covenant on these cows. And if the cows take God's throne back to God straight away, then clearly it's God who did this to the Philistines. But if not, if the cows go any other direction, it was by chance. And it turns out that the cows turn neither right nor left, which is often a Hebrew phrase for disobedience. And that can't be said of Israel. Israel often does go right and left of God's law, but these cows are more obedient to God than Israel. Now, the Israelites initially have the an appropriate response to God's return to presence with the ark. They rejoice in verse 13, but they actually make a lot of mistakes, and not just mistakes, but big failures. First of all, 
while they're offering a burnt offering as thanks for the return of the ark, and that is appropriate, Leviticus chapter 1 requires that all burnt offerings be male, and these Levites in Beth Shemesh offer uh, the cows. They offer female uh, animals. The more important mistakes actually have to do with the way they treat the ark. They took down the ark uh, from the cows, they set it on a large stone, and then they look into the ark, and everything they do here is wrong. According to Numbers chapter 5, the ark should have been covered at all times, and the same chapters tell us that even uh, the people who were typically des designated for carrying the ark were never to touch it or even to see it. So they mistreat the ark, they, they don't obey God's laws with the ark, they don't revere it the way they should, so God punishes them. And some manuscripts, some of your translations might say that 70 people uh, were killed by God. Some say 50,000 and 70 were killed. Obviously, those numbers are very different. The bottom line is that the manuscripts differ, and it's not clear how to translate it. But one of the verse, verses says that the people mourned because the Lord had made a great slaughter. And in my opinion, that actually fits closer to the 50,000 number. But whichever, whatever you think, the people of Beth Shemesh, who are Israelites, say to themselves, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? To whom shall he go so that we may be rid of him? So they sent messengers to another city, kiriath Jerim, and they say, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to you. In other words, these Israelites are behaving a lot like the Philistines. They don't know what to do with the ark. They mistreat it. God punishes them, and they just send it away. They don't want anything to do with it. One scholar named Peter Lightheart says, the, Lord's, the Lord fights Philistines wherever they are, whether they're in with among the Philistines, whether they're in Israel, whether they are in Beijing or Baghdad, Washington or Wheaton College. And I think that's an interesting point to make about this passage. Being God's people is not a hall pass to do whatever you want. Being God's people is not a protection from all forms of punishment. When the Philistines or the Israelites misuse the ark, God punishes them both. In First Peter, in the New Testament, he writes, It is time for judgment to begin with God's household. In other words, God's household is not exempt from judgment. We are exempt from condemnation. We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But God is free to punish his people in this life, and that's what he does in this passage. Now, at the end of chapter 6, the ark ends up in kiriath Jerim. It's a city within the land of Israel, but it's actually a predominantly Gentile city. Later on in 2 Samuel, when the ark is attempted to be brought to Jerusalem, there was another time where it spent in the it spent time in the house of a Gentile named Obed Edom, and this is a Gittite from a Philistine town. So in both of these incidents, the Lord allows his ark to be among the Gentiles, and it provokes Israel to jealousy. What happens is the Israelites want God's presence to be with them. And so God allows this his presence to dwell in a city of Gentile God-fearers until Israel turns back to God and seeks the Lord, and then the Lord comes to them. And it's actually interesting to, to think about if that theme is picked up by Paul in the book of Romans chapter 11. Paul writes this, Did the Israelites stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? He says, Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. This is a theme that we see throughout Scripture. God's presence will go to the Gentiles, and it almost it allures uh, his own people uh, to, to seek the Lord again and turn back to the Lord and crave his presence, and then God returns to them. Here are a few questions to help our Bible study today. The ark is a good gift that the Israelites misuse in order to try to force God to do their will. What good gifts from God do we misuse in order to try to force God to do our will? Second, God saves us from eternal condemnation through Jesus Christ, but God continues to punish due to our sin. Why does God discipline us through punishment, and what does that show about his character? Third, 
God dwells among Gentiles in order to provoke his people to jealousy. Can you think of times in the New Testament where God in some way goes to the Gentiles in order to provoke his people to jealousy?